Hi, my name is John Dooley, and I am the entomologist for the United States Department of Agriculture, Plant Protection and Quarantine at San Francisco, California. My specialty is that I identify all of the white flies and armored scales that accompany shipments coming into the country from all over the world. Now we are moving on to the Allerodea, the white flies, with only one family, the Allerodidae. As you can see on this front screen, they have both the pupil cases and the illustration of the pupil case in the adult stages. Uh, bear in mind that most of this will deal with the pupil stage. The, uh, the Allerodidae has more than almost 1,700 known species of white flies in 166 genera and three living subfamilies and one fossil family. They are very important pests of fruit, ornamental, and agronomic crops. As you can see, the Allerodidae subfamily has close to 1,500 species, while the Allerodicene has only 10% of that, roughly 136 species. And these are the only two that are normally intercepted in quarantine so far. The Allerodicene, uh, the number and the number and percent of species occurs over here with 136 species and are almost always neotropical, although they do occur in other areas. You can see on the illustration these large pores, these are called compound pores, which are indicative of the Allerodicene, but do not occur in all of the species. If you don't see these large pores, you would, would like to take a look at the legs to see if they have a claw on it. If they do, they are Allerodicene. The Allerodicene uh, uh, consists of almost 1,500 species, 92%, and are widely distributed and more species in tropical regions, especially the oriental region. And you can see the different areas for tropical uh, number of species and the number of genera for the tropical and blue, and I'm sorry, for the uh, temperate and blue and the tropical and red. So they're far more tropical than there are in temperate climates. They are, the white flies are small and mainly found on the leaves of the plants. The eggs are deposited on the leaves, no other part of the plant, and develop through the pupil stage until they emerge as an adult and then restart the cycle all over again. The puparia being the only diagnostic stage that we deal with that can identify the species can be jet black, can be with a waxy coating uh, on top of a kind of a pale to yellowish pupil case, could be just a yellowish to a pale pupil case, and could be highly uh, concentrated as in these uh, illustrations or figures here as well. They damage plants by sucking the plant juices. Bamesia tabasi is the most important vector of plant viruses, actually over 100 or some more viruses, causing billions in losses. In, 1990, in 1990s, India had a 70% loss of their cotton crops just due uh, by Bamesia tabasi biotype Q alone. You can see the destruction of these trees by the ficus um, uh, by the ficus aleroded, uh, where they uh, basically defoliate the leaves or cause of chlorosis, etc., causes a lot of damage. And the same is as well it shows you here with the economic pest because of the vector of the diseases and or the population explodes because of uh, pesticide resistance and other factors or because they build up so much like citrus black fly that they develop uh, sooty mold and other fungi that make it unmarketable for the different uh, plants for them uh, for selling or for propagation. The population also explodes also uh, because they are separated from the natural enemies when they are intercepted in quarantine when they're imported. Few times we do see the natural enemies also coming with them but that is the exception to the case. The natural enemies, for the most part, are hymenoptera, like uh, aphanelid wasps, or um, they may be some hemiptera, like uh, I believe anthocorid, and some other uh, predators as well. So why is it important to identify them? 
is number one is to stop them from coming into the country in the first place if we can. So we meet, need to know how to separate them from the other common ones that we we'll already have here. And if they happen to become established, like the ficus uh, alerotid in Florida, then we need to know more about them to determine how to control them. So that is also a big issue. And as you can see, the damage that they cause once they become established. How to identify white flies? You have to have an identifiable stage, specifically the pupil stage. Uh, these are examples of the pupil stage, one which is clear to yellowish in, uh, in vivo, and one which is brownish to blackish, both pupil cases. You need a good microscope, and you need them slide mounted to get confirmation of the species. How to identify white flies? You need to understand the important characters used to identify the morphology. And what is important when you go into this is, it's not just the character or the structure you need to identify, but its location, whether it's on the dorsal ventral side, whether it's on the margin, the submargin, the subdorsum, the dorsum, the submedium, or the medium area, whether it's on the head or the thorax, or whether it's on the abdominal segments. So all these areas are extremely important in identifying the species, and even to separate from the uh, different subfamilies as well. You also need good taxonomic keys that some can be gotten on, online, and others you need to order if you don't already have them in your library. Uh, without the keys, it's virtually impossible to go to species for most of these uh, organisms. There are the life cycle has six stages, the egg stage, the crawler, the second and third instar, which is known as a nymph, the fourth instar, the piparium, and the adult. As I said, the fourth instar is the important one, which is a piparium for identification. The third and second are nymphs, which are just have reduced structures and fairly difficult to tell from the piparium stage and the crawler, which is the dispersive stage, which travels all over the place until it decides to lay down and start feeding on a specific area and develop into the second and then the third stage and then the pupil stage. The males and females are winged and they also have three pairs of legs. They're also very important uh, if they are intercepted with the pupa. However, to identify just the adults are very, very difficult. White fly immatures in adults are really distinguished from other families by what they call the vasiform orifice, which is this round structure at the posterior dorsal end of the pupil case. This structure, incidentally, if you look at the adult, occurs also in the adult stage, the pupil stage, every stage except for the egg stage. And this structure it only occurs in allorotids does not occur in any other insects that I am aware of. Another problem with identification of allorotids is that you have other organisms that look like allorotids and mimic allorotids. One such one are some of the aphids such as the palm aphid, ceratophus, which actually has cornicles. If you look at the picture, you see this broad wax fan around the pupil case see it in uh, lower magnification up here, which looks exactly like one of the allorotids that we find, but you will not see a vasiform orifice, and when you tap it with a pin, it will probably start moving, or you pop it and turn it over, its legs will start moving. So these are all fully functional, full, fully functional legs and very mobile. Two other groups that be aware of, if you have nymphs of soft scales, where you may mistake the anal plate as a vasiform orifice, or you have psyllid nymphs that also are pale, very small, and also can be confused. So all of these should be mounted for the most part, except for the serotaph, as you can tell outright, even under a dissecting scope, that it's not an allorotid. These are the collaborators that took part in this project. Does anybody have any questions? What is the difference between fold, furrow, and ridge? In some of the keys, uh, you'll find there would be a reference to a subdorsal fold for allorotids, a subdorsal ridge, and a subdorsal furrow. 
the difference basically is that the subdorsal fold is an actual uh, folded part of the epidermis in the subdorsum area of the of the uh, white fly, uh, whereas the subdorsal subdorsal furrow is actually a structure similar to the fold, but it forms like a uh, uh, a ditch going around the puparium on the subdorsum area. The ridge itself is not used very often. Uh, but sometimes it can mean that there is a roll of papillae on the subdorsum that forms a ridge or a series all the way down from the head, the cephalon, down to the uh, bottom of the uh, uh, puparium close to the caudal fold. John, what is the difference between the papillae and the tubercles? In some uh, keys, papillae and tubercles are usually dorsal structures uh, Papillae, especially like triallurodes, tri are usually bullet-shaped or conical-shaped structures that form like a series on the sub-margin uh, going uh, all the way down the puparium case. A tubercle has been defined basically as a structure that has no real shape. It's not shaped like a, a cone. It's not shaped like a bullet. Uh, or something of that sort. It's almost amorphous, but it is a structure that occurs on the dorsum for the most part and the medium part on the dorsum of the puparium, and they do vary. Unfortunately, there are some authors who pretty much don't see much of a difference and will call either one either a papillae or a tubercle.